Since being branded as that one tech-savvy friend by most of the people that I know, I get asked a myriad of electronics questions, ranging from, why is my damn computer running so slow, to, what is a Roku? So, why break tradition? Now, right this very eight-ish minutes, I'm going to next answer one of my very favorite questions. A question dating all the way back to 2007, the dawn of the four and a half inch candy bar style touchscreen devices, and the eventual slow and agonizing demise of the flip phone. Android or iOS? In case you've been living under a rock, smart devices like phones and tablets these days come in several different flavors of operating systems. The biggest two contenders by far are the cute candy-themed Android, which is a Google product, and the beautiful but robust iOS, which is produced by Apple. As of February this year, Android has the lead in the smartphone operating system race, coming in at 53% of the market share, but iOS is no shirker, coming in not far behind at about 42%. There are other operating systems out there, but really, they represent such a small minority that it's like comparing Trump Tower to the hot dog vendor camped outside the front door. Okay, maybe not specifically this guy, because he was fired for trying to sell $30 hot dogs. But those other smaller weenies are Microsoft Windows Phone OS, BlackBerry self-named BlackBerry OS, and barely making an appearance as the relish on this proverbial sausage fest is the Symbian operating system. So, people favor Android, you might say, and statistically, you could argue that they do. But when you break it down by device manufacturer, you see an entirely different story. Since every iOS device is made by Apple and exclusively runs the iOS software, that 42% market share stays at exactly the same number. You see, Android may be the most popular operating system, but it also has to be adapted and installed on hundreds of different models of devices by a plethora of completely different manufacturers. Samsung is by far the most popular at a nice 28%, taking up more space than LG, Motorola, and HTC, the next three companies on this list combined. Google has its very own Nexus line of Android phones as well, but sales of these devices are so dismal that they get lumped in with all the other miscellaneous manufacturers. That right there should tell you something, when the maker of the software doesn't sell the most devices for. All these different companies making different devices for the same software means that there are a variety of takes of the same concept, which is good for the consumer that is looking for options, but because of the differences, each manufacturer's device handles the software in a completely different way. Having originally owned an HTC Droid Incredible, when I made the switch to Samsung Galaxy S4, I had to spend a few days learning where everything was moved to. Buttons were in different places, the camera worked differently, the little trackpad button was gone. Heck, even the way the operating system looked and behaved was different. They had the same basic guts, but each manufacturer put its own skin over the top of the Android-based system, giving it a little bit of a unique look and feel. This meant extra time learning the same operating system I'd already been using. We call this fragmentation in the industry, and it's not convenient. The flip side of this argument is Apple the tech giant, not the food. Pick up any Apple device, be it the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod Touch, no matter which generation, and they will all look and behave the same way because they run exactly the same operating system. Now, if you were to compare an older device to a newer device, then there is some deviation in the abilities of them due to them, well, being newer. A good example is Apple Pay and the fingerprint reader which make an appearance on all new models starting with the iPhone 5S. But overall, very little changes with each subsequent update. Another big problem with Android devices is in how they receive updates. Google will release an update to the Android ecosystem that might include patches, updates, or new features. This update gets sent to the other manufacturers of the Android devices so that they can adjust the software to run on their individual devices. This includes special code and drivers to make sure that all their hardware works, like the new cameras, the different fingerprint readers, and any of the other sensors or fun toys that they include. But this also means that they have to inject their visualization effects and extra bloatware before it gets pushed out to consumers. This can take weeks or months before the users get the most recent version of Android on their phones, which means that by then, Google could have released another more current version. In fact, Android 4.4 KitKat, which was released back in 2013, 
is still in use on almost 40% of Android devices. This whole process is basically the equivalent of giving your six-year-old nephew a $100 bill for a bag of flour and sending him to the grocery store, which is located six blocks away past the local confectionery, a Toys R Us, a puppy store, and that little motorized rocket ride that rocks back and forth to music, and expecting him to come back home with just flour and $96 in change. For the record, the most current version of Android is Android 6.0, codenamed Marshmallow. How cute. Apple, on the other hand, releases updates to its iOS software more regularly than our 43rd president says something dumb. And much like that new viral Donald Trump meme, it is pushed simultaneously to all of your devices. This means that every iOS user in the entire world gets to install the same update at the same time. Literally, as of this minute, over a half of the iDevices run the newest version of iOS, which is iOS 9, which was just released last month on September 16th. This ease of updating and rapid deployment means that when it comes to security, Apple doesn't fuck around. When a new exploit or bug for their software is found, Apple is consistently on the ball with releasing an update to patch it, usually within a few weeks. Compare that to Android, where you could still be running an outdated and vulnerable version of Android for months before an update is released. Think of all the sensitive data you send out in that time. All that banking and credit card and personal information. Now for all that crap that I've been giving Google in this video, I have to say that when it comes to their cloud services, I'm a Google fan all the way. Even though with my iPhone I still have an iCloud account with an Apple email address and cloud data storage and calendar and iTunes music, I still prefer to use my Gmail and my Google Drive account. I also wish a few of the features that Android has would migrate their way over to iOS, like widgets on the home screen, or the ability of apps to control some of my settings, like when I get to work and have it turn off my ringtone and go to vibrate. Not to mention being able to set my default web browser to something other than Safari. There are still some things that Google got right that Apple is still struggling to catch up on and at least neither endorses Internet Explorer. Yuck. So do you Apple? Or do you Google? Or are you still rocking and instantly crippled with a single drop of water or flip phone and don't give a shit about any of this? Tell me in the comments below. Like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. More shade is to come and I'll see you next time.